Part One Summons to Walter Lippmann. Summons by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The eager night and the impetuous winds, the hints and whispers of a thousand lures, and all the swift persuasion of the spring surged from the stars and stones and swept me on. The smell of honeysuckles, keen and clear, startled and shook me with the sudden thrill of some well-known but half-forgotten voice. A slender stream became a naked sprite, flashed around curious bends, and winked at me beyond the turns, alert and mischievous. A saffron moon dangling among the trees seemed like a toy balloon caught in the boughs, flung there in sport by some too mirthful breeze, and as it hung there, vivid and unreal, the whole world's lethargy was brushed away. The night kept tugging at my torpid mood, and tore it into shreds. A warm air blew my wintry slothfulness beyond the stars, and over all indifference there streamed a myriad urges in one rushing wave. Touched with the lavish miracles of earth, I felt the brave persistence of the grass, the fair desire of rivulets, the keen unconquerable fervor of the thrush, the endless labors of the patient worm, the lichen strength, the prowess of the ant, the constancy of flowers, the blind belief of ivy climbing slowly toward the sun, the eternal struggles and eternal deaths, and yet the groping faith of every root. Out of old graves arose the cry of life, out of the dying came the deathless call, and thrilling with a new sweet restlessness, the thing that was my boyhood woke in me. Dear foolish fragments made me strong again, valiant adventures dreams of those to come and all the vague heroic hopes of youth with fresh abandon like a fearless laugh leaped up to face the heavens unconcern and then veil upon veil was torn aside stars like a host of merry girls and boys danced gaily round me plucking at my hand the night scorning its ancient mystery leaned down and pressed new courage in my heart the hermit thrush, throbbing with more than song, sang with happy challenge to the skies. Love and the faces of a world of children swept like a conquering army through my blood. And beauty rising out of all its forms, beauty the passion of the universe, flamed with its joy, a thing too great for tears. And like a wine poured itself out for me to drink of, to be warmed with, to go refreshed and strengthened to the ceaseless fight, to meet with confidence the cynic years, battling in wars that never can be won, seeking the lost cause and the brave defeat. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Prayer by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson God, though this life is but a wraith, Although we know not what we use, Although we grope with little faith, Give me the heart to fight and lose. Ever insurgent let me be, Make me more daring than devout, From sleek contentment keep me free, And fill me with a buoyant doubt. Open my eyes to visions girt with beauty and with wonder lit, but let me always see the dirt and all that spawn and die in it. Open my ears to music, let me thrill with spring's first flutes and drums, but never let me dare forget the bitter ballads of the slums. From compromise and things half done, keep me with stern and stubborn pride, and when at last the fight is won, God keep me still unsatisfied. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Arms by Louis Untermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. To Arms. Who can be dull or rapt in unconcern, knowing a world so clamorous and keen? A world of ardent conflict, honest spleen, And healthy, hot desires, too swift to turn. 
vivid and vulgar with no heart to learn see how that drudge a thing unkempt unclean laughs with the royal laughter of a queen even in her the eager fires burn who can be listless in these stirring hours when with athletic courage we engage to storm with fierce abandon sterner powers and meet indifference with a joyful rage thrilled with the purpose and the dream that towers out of this arrogant and blundering age end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the birth of a child by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by bill mosley lano county texas u s a on the birth of a child jerome epstein august eighth nineteen twelve lo to the battleground of life child you have come like a conquering shout out of a struggle into strife, out of darkness into doubt. Girt with the fragile armor of youth, child, you must ride into endless wars with the sword of protest, the buckler of truth, and a banner of love to sweep the stars. About you the world's despair will surge. Into defeat you must plunge and grope, be to the faltering an urge, be to the hopeless years a hope, be to the darkened world a flame, be to its unconcern a blow, for out of its pain and tumult you came, and into its tumult and pain you go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How Much of Godhood by Lewis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org By Bill Mosley, Lano County, Texas, USA How Much of Godhood How much of Godhood did it take? What purging epochs had to pass? Ere I was fit for leaf and rake and worthy of the patient grass what mighty travails must have been what ages must have molded me ere i was raised and made akin to dawn the daisy and the sea in what great struggles was i felled in what old lives i labored long ere i was given a world that held a meadow butterflies and song but oh what cleansings and what fears what countless raisings from the dead ere i could see her touched with tears pillow the little weary head end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Great Carousal by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org, by Mark Warner. Oh, do not think me dead when I, beneath a bit of earth, shall lie. Think not that aught can ever kill my arrogant and stubborn will, my buoyant strength, my eager soul. My stern desire shall keep me whole, and lift me from the drowsy deep. I shall not even yield to sleep, for death can never take from me my warm insatiate energy he shall not dare to touch one part of the gay challenge of my heart and i shall laugh at him and lie happy beneath a laughing sky for i have fought too joyously to let the conqueror conquer me i know that after strengthening strife death cannot quench my love of life rob me of my dear self my ears of music or my eyes of tears no, death shall come in friendlier guise, the cloth of darkness from my eyes. He shall roll back and low the sea, of silence shall not cover me. He shall make soft my final bed, stand like a servant at my head. And thrilled with all that death may give, I shall lie down to rest and live.
and I shall know within the earth a softer but a deeper mirth. The wind shall never troll a song, but I shall hear it borne along, and echoed long before he passes by all the little unborn grasses. I shall be clasped by roots and rains, feeding and fed by living grains. There shall not be a single flower above my head but bears my power, and every butterfly or bee that taste the flower shall drink of me. Ah, we shall share a lip to lip, carousal and companionship. The storm, like some great blustering lout, shall play his games with me and shout. His joy to all the countryside, autumn, sun-tanned and april-eyed, shall scamper by and send his host of leaves like brown and merry ghost to frolic over me and stones shall feel the dancing in their bones and red-cheeked winter too shall be a jovial bedfellow for me setting the startled hours ringing with boisterous tales and lusty singing and like a mother that has smiled for years on every tired child summer shall hold me in her lap and when the root stirs and the sap climbs anxiously beyond the boughs and all the friendly worms carouse then oh how proudly we shall sing bravures for the feet of spring and i shall lie forever there like some great king and watch the fair young spring dance on for me and know that love and rosy valleys glow where'er her blithe feet touch the earth and headlong joy and reckless mirth seeing her footsteps shall pursue oh i shall watch her smile and strew laughter and life with either hand and every quiver of the land shall pierce me while a joyful wave beats in upon my radiant grave i like a king in deathless state i shall be throned and contemplate the dying of the years the vast vague panorama of the past the march of centuries, the surge of ages, but the deathless urge shall stir me always and my will, shall laugh to keep me living still, thrilling with every call and cry, too much in love with life to die, content to touch the earth to hear, the whisper of each waiting year, to help the stars go proudly by, to speed the timid grass and lie sharing with every movement's breath the rich eternity of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain thanks by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson thank god for this bright frailty of life the lyric briefness of its reckless spring. Thank God for all the swift adventuring, the bold uncertainty, the rousing strife. Thank God the world is set to such a tune that life is such a proud and crashing wave, that none but lifeless things shall be time's slave, like the long dead but never tiring moon. That godlike passion strangely leaps and runs, that youth cannot grow old, nor beauty stale, that even death is fragile and must fail before the wind of joy that speeds the suns. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. God's Youth by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. God's Youth. I often wish that I had been alive ere God grew old, before his eyes were tired of the eternal circlings of the sun, of the perpetual springs, the weary years forever marching on an unknown quest, the yawning seasons pacing to and fro, like stolid sentinels to guard the earth. I wish that I had been alive when he was still delighted with each casual thing his mind could fashion when his soul first thrilled with childlike pleasure at the blooming sun, when the first dawn met his enraptured eyes, and the first prayers of men stirred in his heart. With what a glow of pride he heard the stars rush by him, 
singing as they bravely leaped into the unexplored and endless skies, bearing his beauty like a battle cry. Or watched the light, obedient to his will, spring out of nothingness to answer him, hurling strange suns and planets in its joy, a fiery freedom from the lifeless dark. But more than all the splendid heavens he made, the elements new tamed, the harnessed worlds. In spite of these, it must have pleased him most to feel himself branch out, let go, dare all, give utterance to his vaguely formed desires, and loose a flood of fancies, wild and frank. Oh, those were noble times, those gay attempts those vast and droll experiments that were made when God was young and blithe and whimsical, when from the infinite humor of his heart he made the elk with such extravagant horns, the grotesque monkey folk, the angel fish that make in the ocean's depths of visual heaven, the animals like plants, the plants like beasts, the loud inane hyena, and the great impossible giraffe whose silly head threatens the stars, his feet embracing earth. The paradox of the peacock, whose bright form is like a brilliant trumpet and his voice a strident squawk, a cackle and a joke. The ostrich, like a snake tied to a bird, all out of sense and drawing, wilder far than all the mad fantastic thoughts of men. The humpbacked camel, like a lump of clay, thumbed at for hours, and then thrown aside. The elephant with splendid useless tooth and nose and arm and fingers all in one, the hippopotamus absurd and bland. Oh, how God must have laughed when first he saw these great jests breathe and love and walk about, and how the heavens must have echoed him, for greater than his beauty or his wrath was God's vast mirth before his back was bent with time and all the troubling universe, ere he grew dull and weary with creating. Oh, to have been alive and heard that laugh thrilling the stars, convulsing all the earth, while meteors flashed from out his sparkling eyes, and even the eternal placid night forgot to lift reproving fingers, smiled and joined, indulgent in the merriment, and how they sang, and how the hours flew when God was young and blithe and whimsical. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. In the Berkshire Hills by Lewis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Davis In the Berkshire Hills How can the village dead remain so still? Surely they tingle with the whiny air When the skies riot and the sunsets flare And all the world becomes a flaming hill Surely the driest dust must turn and thrill when these wild breezes sweep out all despair and lakes are bluest, pools are starriest where the streaming heavens overflow and spill. Oh, were it I that lay like any clod, though buried under rock and gnarled tree, I would arise and through the clinging sod go struggling upward, passionate and proud, laugh with the winds and mountains watching me and dancing triumph on my crumbling shroud. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Voices by Lewis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Bill Mosley, Llano County, Texas, USA Voices all day with anxious heart and wondering ear I listened to the city, heard the ground echo with human thunder, and the sound go reeling down the streets and disappear. The headlong hours in their wild career shouted and sang until the world was drowned with babel voices, each one more profound. All day it surged, but nothing could I hear. That night the country never seemed so still. The trees and grasses spoke without a word to stars that brushed them with their silver wings. Together with the moon I climbed the hill, and in the very heart of silence 
heard the speech and music of immortal things. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Revelation by Lewis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Bill Mosley Llano County, Texas, USA Revelation September And an afternoon heavy with languid thoughts and long The air breathes faintly half in swoon Like silence trembling after song the mighty calmness seems to draw my spirit through a painless birth. And now, with eyes that never saw, I see the poetry of earth. That group of old maple trees brooding in peace by the river, happy with sunlight, and an oriole singing among them. Lo, what a marvel, what rapture for him who first sung them, that here, in less space than a carpenter's workshop, the giver has fashioned a casual wonder greater than dawn or the thunder. Here in a dozen of feet he has blended music and motion and color and form, each in itself a creation so splendid that were it the world's one beauty, twould warm and kindle all life till it ended. Birds and old maple trees only to think of these, only to dream of them here for an hour, is to know all the secrets of earth. For here is the world that God sang into flower and bloom at its birth. Here is its magical uplift and power, its music and mirth. Here the sun scarcely wakes. Like a monarch it takes rest on the lordliest branches alone till a glad tremor shakes every leaf that is blown, while a zephyr advancing breathes gently and breaks the light into dancing figures with glancing rhythms and rhymes of their own. Yes, here in this spot, in this edge of an acre, all the world is, the heart and the whole of it. Here is a universe. Daily the Maker shows here the sweet and extravagant soul of it. For the arms of the maple have held in their cover the earth and the sky and the stars, every one, not the tenderest twig, but has known, like a lover, the silence, the night, and the sun. Not the airiest bird, but has sung all unknowing, the joy of each minstrel that carols unheard. And summer, green fields, and a world of things growing are brought to this spot by the breath of a bird. And there's never a wind but brings roadsides and ranches, forests and tales of the far off and free. And the rush of the breeze as it sings in the branches echoes and answers the rush of the sea. A group of old maple trees brooding in peace by the river. That, and a bird, nothing else, but above and around it, the spell of the infinite beauty, half hidden forever, lies like a secret of God's. And here I have found it, the hymn of the cosmic, the anthem that has for its choir stars, rivers, and flowers, still rises and sweeps me along, while the cry of the oriole melts in a sunset of fire, and the heavens, a jubilant chorus, are flushed with the fires of song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Affirmation by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson As long as vigorous discontent goads us from torpid ease, or worse, I thank the power that sent struggle, the savior of the universe. As long as things are torn and hurled 
in this implacable unrest i shall embrace the world with joyful fierceness and undying zest i shall grow strong with every hurt the scorn the anger will achieve only a glad alert desire to question boldly and believe my eager faith shall keep me set against despair or careless hate knowing this smoke and sweat is forging something violent and great end of poem this recording is in the public domain downhill on a bicycle by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by annie rue downhill on a bicycle the rolling earth stops as i climb the summit then like a plummet it suddenly drops down down i go past rippling acres hillsides like breakers over me flow wildly alive i hail the green shimmer fresh as a swimmer after the dive like banners unfurled the skies dip and flourish the keen breezes nourish while the bright world is a ribbon unrolled with a border of grasses and tansies are masses and splotches of gold still i whirl on startled a sparrow darts from the yarrow flash and is gone faster the gleams die as they dazzle and roadsides of basil turn to pink streams sharp as a knife is each perfume and color to feel nothing duller god that were life end of poem this recording is in the public domain Midnight in the Open Window by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Midnight by the Open Window. How wrapped the sleeping stillness of the night, incomparably close and vast. One might hear the tense silence in the little street, reaching to heaven, where it swells and breaks into moon music and star song that makes my senses bend and sway as waving wheat trembles before the wind's majestic feet trembles with happy fear and numb delight how sharp the silence like a sword to smite brittle security in iron aches a soundless and imperative blast that wakes undreamed of powers terrible and sweet while god comes down roused to the jubilant fight roused from the sleepy comfort of his seat end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wine of night by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by annie rue the wine of night come drink the mystic wine of night brimming with silence and the stars, while earth, bathed in this holy light, is seen without its scars. Drink in the daring and the dews, the calm winds and the restless gleam. This is the draught that beauty brews. Drink. It is the dream. Drink, O oh my soul, and do not yield. These solitudes, this wild rose air, shall strengthen thee, shall be thy shield against a world's despair. O oh, quaff this stirrup cup of stars, trembling with hope and high desire, then back into the hopeless wars with faith and fire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Part two Interludes to My Wife Invocation by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Listen, my lute, I would turn from your militant measures. Well have you answered the touch of intransient fingers. Wildly your strings have vibrated, but have you forgotten how to make love songs? Lute, you are hot to the hand. You are tense and exultant. Cease crying out. Let me rest from the din and the battle. Life is not only a summoning shout and a struggle. A blow and a silence. Is there not vigorous peace after vigorous onslaught? Beauty's a challenge as fierce and as stirring as conflict. Look how she runs through the tremulous twilight to meet me. Do you remember? 
see it is night and she turns to my arms of a sudden soft as a mother and wild with the fires of april bashful and bold with her passionate hair all about her lovely and lavish lute it was she who awoke and impelled us to singing ah those first lyrics impulsive and feeble and earnest she who aroused us and soothed us our passion our pillow dare you forget her only remember tis she keeps me rested and restless only remember my heart like a fate in strong breezes leaps at the thought of her voice and her slow searching kisses stabbing and healing end of poem this recording is in the public domain Feuer Zauber by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Wolfgang Bass. I never knew the earth had so much gold. The fields ran over with it, and this hill, hoary and old, is young with buoyant blooms that flame and thrill. Such golden fires, such yellows low how good this spendthrift world and what a lavish god this fringe of wood blazing with buttercup and golden rod you too beloved are changed again i see your face grow mystical as on that night you turned to me and all the trembling world and you were white ah you're touched your singing lips grow dumb the fields absorb you, color you entire, and you become a goddess, staying in a world of fire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunday Night by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Etha Davis. Sunday night. Tossing throughout this tense and nervous night, sleepless I drowse, my soul, for lack of rest, sinks like a bird that after flight on flight misses the shelter of its well-loved nest. So would I gain your side and seek, my love, the comfortable heaven of your breast. Once more to lie beside the window seat and see far off the ribboned river lights, the yellow gas lamps in the dusky street, and pressing close from proud and alien heights the noble skies and the inviolate stars surround and bless us these autumnal nights. No words, the silence, and your breathless name are all that's in the world, and faint and fair the distant church bells solemnly proclaim to all the meek and Sabbath-scented air. I take you in my arms, and I awake, groping with restless anger for a prayer. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Kennebunkport by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org. At Kennebunkport, we sat together at the ocean's edge. The night was mystical and warm. From every rambling roadside hedge, wild roses followed us with a swarm of scents. The pines and every odorous tree triumphed and rose above the languid sea. The stars were dim. The world was hushed, as though before a shrine. We sat together at the ocean's rim, your hand in mine. Then came the moon, a calm, benignant moon, like some indulgent mother that has smiled on every wayward child. The breathing stillness, like a wordless croon, made the soft heart of heaven doubly mild, and the salt air mingled with the air of June, the vast and intimate silence, and your lips. Faintly we saw the lanterns of three ships, 
three swaying sparks of sudden red and green. We spoke no word. We heard unseen a nightbird wearily flapping, and nothing murmured in that world of wonder, only the hushing water's gentle lapping, a distant trembling as of ghostly thunder, then, poignantly and plain, the lonely whistle of a weary train, and once again the silence and your lips. Oh, let me never cease to thank you for that night, that night that eased and fortified my heart, when radiant peace, dearer than all delight, bathed every old and fever smart, wiped out all memories of the uncleanly fight, cradled in that great beauty and your arms. The cries and mad alarms were lulled, and all the bitter banners furled, the tumult vanished, and the thought thereof. In you I knew the sweet contentment of the world, the balm of silence, and the strength of love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In a Strange City by Lewis Suntermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Davis. In a Strange City. Dusk and a hunger for your face that grows with brooding twilight deeper, whilst in this hushed and cheerless place the world lies like a careless sleeper. Oh, for a brave red wave of sound to send life flowing somehow through me. Oh, for the blatant human round to end these hours lone and gloomy. At last, the friendly summer night and children's voices calling after Long avenues sing out with light, murmurs arise and bursts of laughter. I hear the lisp of happy feet. Life goes on like a rushing river. A boy comes whistling up the street, and I am lonelier than ever. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Folk Song by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. Back she came through the trembling dusk, and her mother spoke and said, What is it makes you late today, and why do you smile, and sing as gay as though you just were wed? Oh, mother, my hen that never had chicks has hatched out six. Back she came through the flaming dusk, and her mother spoke and said, what gives your eyes that dancing light? What makes your lips so strangely bright, and why are your cheeks so red? O oh, mother, the berries I ate in the lane have left a stain. Back she came through the faltering dusk, and her mother spoke and said, You are weeping. Your footstep is heavy with care. What makes you totter and cling to the stair, and why do you hang your head? O oh, mother! Oh, mother, you can never know. I loved him so. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Streets by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould Boy, my boy, it is lonely in the city, Days that have no pity, and the nights without a tear follow all too slowly. And I can no more dissemble. I am frightened, and I tremble, and I would that you were here. Oh, boy, God keep you. Boy, my boy, I had sworn to weep no longer. Time I thought was stronger than the evenings long gone by. The ardent looks the eager hands, the whispers hot and hurried, but they all come back unburied and not one of them will die. Oh, boy, God save you. Boy, my boy, you were bold with youth and power. Your love was like a flower that you wore upon your sleeve. And wherever you may go, there'll be a girl with eyes that glisten, a girl to watch and listen and a girl for you to leave. Oh, boy, God help her. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Envy 
by Louis Untermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. The willow in the river ripple with silver speech, and one refrain forever they murmur each to each. Brook with the silver gravel, would that your lot were mine, to wander free, to travel where greener valleys shine. Strange ventures, fresh revealings, and at the end, the sea. Brook with your turnings and wheelings, how rich your life must be. Tree with the golden rustling, would that I were so blessed, To cease this stumbling, jostling, this feverish unrest. I join the ocean's riot, you stand song-filled and free. Tree with your peace and quiet, how rich your life must be. The willow and the river ripple with silver speech and one refrain forever they murmur each to each. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Birthday by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis A Birthday Again I come with my handful of song with my trumpery gift tricked out and made showy with rhyme. It is spring, and the time when your thoughts are long, when the blossoming world in its confident prime whispers and wakens imperative dreams, when you color and start with the airiest schemes, and the laughter of children is stirring your heart. With all of these voices that rise to restore you to gladness again, with your heart full of things that sing and adore you, I come with my strain. I come with my tinkling that patters like rain on a rickety pane, with the jingle of words and old tunes which have long done duty in song, spreading my verse like a showman before you, and you turn to the world as you turn to the bosom that bore you. In all this singing at your heart, in all this ringing through the day, in the bravado of the May, I have no part. For I am not one with the conquering year that wakes without fear the lyrical souls of the feathery throng, that flames in the heavens when the evenings are long, that surges with power and urges with cheer the boldness of love, the laugh of the strong, and the confident song. I am no longer the masterful lover, storming my way to the shrine of your heart, Reckless with youth and the zest to discover all that the world sets apart. I am no longer wiser and stronger. No longer I shout in the face of the world. No longer my challenge is sounded and hurled with such fury that even the heavens must hear it. No longer I mount on a passionate flood. Something has changed my arrogant spirit. Something has left my braggart blood. Something has left me, something has entered in, something I knew not, something beyond my desire. Deeper and gentler I hold you, all that has been, seems like a spark that is lost in a forest of fire. Minor my song is, for still the old memories burn, only in you and your thought do I find my release. I have done with the blustering airs, and I turn from the clamorous strife to the greater heroics of peace. Take me again out of the cries and alarms, all of the tumult is vain here in your arms. Hold me again, oft have we wandered apart, now it is all made plain here in your heart. Heal me again, cleanse me with tears that remove pain and the ruins of pain here in your love. Minor, my song was, Abashed, I must lower my voice. Something has touched me with nobler and holier fire. Something that thrills as when trumpets and children rejoice. Something I knew not. Something beyond my desire. Mine are no longer. The sighing and droning depart. In a chorus of triumph the jubilant spirits increase. Shelter and spur me forever in the merciful strength of your heart. You who have soothed me with passion and roused me with passionate peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Leaving the Harbor by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. At last the great red sun sank low, an evil bloodshot eye, and cooling air sprang up to blow the sea that challenged, glow for glow, the angry face of the sky. Still burned the streets we had left behind, where tortured and broken down the millions scarcely hoped to find a moment's escape from the maddening grind in the terrible furnace of town. And blotting out cities, the twilight fell with a single star at seven. The sea grew wider beneath the spell, and the moon, like a broken silver shell, lay on the shore of heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. THE SHELL TO THE PEARL by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Grow not so fast, glow not so warm, thy hidden fires burn too wild, too perfect is thy rounded form, cling close, my child. Be yet, my babe, rest quiet when the great sea urges beat and call, too soon wilt thou be ripe for men, the world and all. Thy shining skin, thy silken sheath, these will undo thee all too soon, and men will fight for thee beneath some paler moon. I, thou my own, my undefiled, shalt make the lewd world dream and start, when they have seized and torn thee, child, out of my heart. With velvets shall thy bed be laid, a royal captive thou shalt be, and oh, what prices will be paid to ransom thee! Thy path shall be a track of gold, of lust, of death, and countless crimes, bought by a sensual world and sold a thousand times, and each shall lose thee at the last, hating, yet still desiring thee, while I lie here, I have been cast back in the sea. So wait, and lest the world transform thy soul and make thee wanton wild, grow not so fast glow not so warm cling close my child in the poem this recording is in the public domain the young mystic by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by annie rue the young mystic we sat together close and warm my little tired boy and i watching across the evening sky the coming of the storm no rumblings rose no thunder crashed the west wind scarcely sang aloud but from a huge and solid cloud the summer lightnings flashed then he whispered father watch i think god's going to light his moon and when my boy oh very soon i saw him strike a match end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Healed by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Healed. The winds, like a pack of hounds, snap at my dragging heels. With sudden leapings and playful bounds, they urge me out to the greener grounds where the butterfly sinks and the swallow reels giddy with spring, with its smells and sounds, and I go. For of late I have fretted and sulked, and clung to my books and the house, lethargic with winter fancies, and dulled with a torpid mood. But now I am called by the grasses, the rumor of blossoming boughs, the hints of a thousand singers, and the ancient thrill of the wood. For the streets run over with sunlight and spill a glory on bricks in the dustiest sill, and life, like a great drum, pulses and pounds. I follow the world, and I follow my will, and I go to see what the park reveals, when the winds, like a pack of buoyant hounds, snap at my dragging heels. Once with the green again, how I am changed. Lo, I have seen again friends long estranged. Once more the lyrical rose-bush and river, Once more the miracle greater than ever. 
where there is dullness now rich with new urges life in its fullness now surges and purges all that is brash in me sunlight and song these things will fashion me splendid and strong splendid and strong i shall grow once again joyful and clean as the mind of a child as tears after pain or hearts reconciled as woods washed with rain as love in the wild or that bird to whom all things but singing is vain bird there were songs in your heart just as rapturous as those that you bring why when we longed for your magic to capture us did you not sing now with the world making music we heed you not coward for all your fine challenge we need you not we too are brave with the spring so i sang but a something was missing the song and the sunlight were stale though a squirrel had sat on my shoulder and sparrows had fed from my hand though i heard the white laughter of ripples and the breezes faint answering hail and somewhere a bird's voice i knew not yet hearing could half understand and lo at my doorstep i saw it it shouted to me as i came it laughed in its simple revealment a miracle common and wild plainly i heard and beheld it bright as a forest of flame and its face was the face of a mother and its voice was the voice of a child end of poem this recording is in the public domain the stirrup cup by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by annie rue the stirrup cup your eyes and a thousand stars leap from the night to aid me i scale the impossible bars i laugh at a world that dismayed me your voice and the thundering skies tremble and cease to appall me coward no longer i rise spurred for what battles may call me your arms and my purpose grow strong your lips and high passions complete me for your love it is armor and song and where's the thing to defeat me end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring on broadway by lewis untermeyer read for librivox org by wolfgang bass spring on broadway make way for spring spring that's a stranger in the city spring that's a truant in the town make way for spring for she has no pity and she will tear your barriers down make way for spring see from her hidden valleys with mirth that never pause she comes with songs and sallies with bows and magic calls and dances down your alleys and whispers through your walls you who never once have missed her in your town of pomp and pride now in vain you will resist her you will feel her at your side even in the smallest street even in the dances throng she will follow at your feet she will walk with you along she will stop you as you start here and there and growing bolder she will touch you on the shoulder she will clutch you at the heart merchant you who drink your meat from a golden cup shut your ears and do not heed look not up beware for she is light as air, er, and her charm will work confusion. Spring is but an old delusion and a snare. Merchant, you who drink your meat while the thirsty die, shut your eyes and do not heed pass her by. Maiden with none like eyes, do not pause to greet her. Spring is far too wild and wise, do not meet her do not listen while she tells her persuasive lures and spells 
do not learn her secrets lest she should plant them in your breast whisper things to shame and shock you make your heart beat fast and mock you send you dreams that rob your rest maiden with nun like eyes spring is far too wild and wise and you my friend with hasty stride think you to escape her oh like fire touching paper she will burn into your side she will rose you once again she will sway you till you follow like the smallest singing swallow in her train put irons on your feet my friend and chain your soul with golden ways lest she should move you in the end and lead you past the city gates and make you frolic with the wind and play a thousand godlike parts and sing until within you starts a pity for the senseless blind the deaf the dumb and all their kind whose eager aimless footsteps wind forever to the frantic mars through every mad and breathless street my friend put irons on your feet so and that is right my friend do not yield send her on her way and end all her follies let her spend her reckless days and nights concealed in wood and field the paths beyond the town are clear these skies are wan bid her be gone what is she doing here what is she doing here and why the city is no place for spring what can she have what can she bring that you would care to buy her songs alas you didn't sing her smiles you have no time to try her wings you do not care to fly spring has not fashioned anything to tempt your jaded eye the city is no place for her it is too violent and shrill too full of graver things but still beneath the throbbing surge and stir her spirit lives and moves until even the dullest feel the spur of an awakened will make way then life rejoicing calls with a lyric rout till in this mighty voicing the very stones sing out till nowhere is a single sleeping or silent thing and worlds that meet and mingle fairly tingle with a spring make way for her for the fervor of life for the passion that stir for the courage of strife for the struggles that bring a more vivid day make way for spring make way end of poem this recording is in the public domain in a cab by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by nemo in a cab rain and the lights of the city Blurred by the mist on the pane, a thing without passion or pity, this is the rain. It beats on the roof with derision, it howls at the doors of the cab. Phantoms go by in a vision, distorted and drab. Torpor and dreariness greet me, all of the things I abhor rise to confront and defeat me as I ride to your door. At last you have come, you have banished the gloom of each rain-haunted street. The tawdry surroundings have vanished. The evening is sweet. Now the whole city is dreamlike. The rain plays the lightest of tunes. The lamps through the mist make it seem like a city of moons. No longer my fancies run riot. I hold the most magic of charms. You smile at me, warm and unquiet, here in my arms. I do not wonder or witness whether it rains or is fair. 
I only can think of your sweetness and the scent of your hair. I am deaf to the clatter and drumming, and life is a thing to ignore. Alas, my beloved, we are coming once more to your door. You have gone. It is listless and lonely. The evening is empty again. The world is a blank. There is only the desolate rain. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Summer Night, Broadway, by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Summer Night, Broadway. Night is the city's disease. The streets and the people one sees glow with a light that is strangely inhuman. A fever that never grows cold. Heaven completes the disgrace. For now, with her star-pitted face, night has the leer of a dissolute woman, cynical, moonscarred, and old. And I think of the country roads, of the quiet, sleeping abodes, where every tree is a silent brother, and the hearth is a thing to cling to. And I sicken and long for it now, to feel clean winds on my brow, where night bends low, like an all-wise mother looking for children to sing to. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Haunted by Lewis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Haunted between the moss and stone, the lonely lilies rise. Wasted and overgrown, the tangled garden lies. Weeds climb about the stoop and clutch the crumbling walls. The drowsy grasses droop, the night wind falls. The place is like a wood, no sign is there to tell where Rose and Iris stood that once she loved so well. Where flocks and asters grew, a leafless thornbush stands, and shrubs that never knew her tender hands. Over the broken fence, the moonbeams trail their shrouds, their tattered cerements cling to the gauzy clouds, and ribbons frayed and thin and startled by the light, silence shrinks deeper in the depths of night. Useless lie spades and rakes, rusts on the garden tools, yet where the moonlight makes nebulous silver pools, a ghostly shape is cast. Something unseen has stirred. Was it a breeze that passed? Was it a bird? Dead roses lift their heads out of a grassy tomb. From ruined pansy beds, a thousand pansies bloom. The gate is opened wide. The garden that has been now blossoms like a bride. Who entered in? End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Isadora Duncan Dancing by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Isadora Duncan Dancing, Iphigenia in Aulis. One. Fling the stones and let them all lie. Take a breath and toss the ball high. And before it strikes the floor of the hoar and aged shore, sweep them up, though there should be even more than two or three. Add a pebble. Then once more, fling the stones and let them all lie. Take a breath and toss the ball high. Two. 
rises now the sound of ancient chants and the circling figure moves more slowly thus the stately gods themselves must dance while the world grows rapturous and holy thus the gods might weave a great romance singing to the sighs of flute and psalter till the last of all the many chants and the priestess sinks before the altar three cease o oh cease the murmured singing hush the numbers brave or blithe for she enters gravely swinging lowering and lithe dark and vengeful as the ringing scythe meets scythe while the flame is fiercely sweeping all her virgin airs depart she is without smiles and weeping or a maiden's art stern and savage as the leaping heart meets heart four now the tune grows frantic now the torches flare wild and corybantic echoes fill the air with a sudden sally all the voices shout and the bacchic rally turns into a rout here is life that surges through each burning vein here is joy that purges every creeping pain even sober sadness casts aside her pall till with buoyant madness she must swoon and fall chopin faint preludings on a flute and she swims before us shadows follow in pursuit like a phantom chorus sense and sound are intertwined through her necromancy till our dreaming souls are blind to all things but fancy haunted woods and perfumed nights swift and soft desires roses violet-colored lights and the sound of lyres vague chromatics on a flute all are subtly blended till the instrument grows mute and the dance is ended End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chopin by Louis Sontermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Davis. Chopin. Faint preludings on a flute, and she swims before us. Shadows follow in pursuit like a phantom chorus. Sense and sound are intertwined through her necromancy, till our dreaming souls are blind to all things but fancy. Haunted woods and perfumed nights, swift and soft desires, roses, violet-coloured lights, and the sound of lyres. Vague chromatics on a flute are all subtly blended, till the instrument grows mute, and the dance is ended. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Songs and the Poet by Louis Untermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Songs and the Poet for Sarah Teasdale. Sing of the rose or of the mire. Sing strife or rising moons the silence or the throng. Poet, it matters not if life is in the song. If life rekindles it, and if the rhymes bear beauty as their eloquent refrain, though it were sung a thousand times, sing it again. Thrill us with song. Let others preach or rage. Make us so thirst for beauty that we cease these struggles, and this strident age grows sweet with peace. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Heretic by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson 1. Blasphemy I do not envy God. There is no thing in all the skies or under to startle and awaken him to wonder. 
no marvel can appear to stir his placid soul with terrible thunder he was not born with awe nor blessed with fear i do not envy god he is not burned with spring and april madness the rush to life its rash impetuous gladness he cannot hope to know he cannot feel the fever and the sadness the leaping fire the insupportable glow i do not envy god forever he must watch the planets crawling to flaming goals where sun and star are falling he cannot wander free for he must face through centuries appalling a vast and infinite monotony i do not envy god he cannot die he dare not even slumber though he be god and free from care and cumber i would not share his place for he must live when years have lost their number and time sinks crumbling into shattered space i do not envy god nay more i pity him his lonely heaven i pity him each lonely morn and even his splendid lonely throne for he must sit and wait till all is riven alone through all eternity alone two irony why are the things that have no death the ones with neither sight nor breath eternity is thrust upon a bit of earth a senseless stone a grain of dust a casual clod receives the greatest gift of god a pebble in the roadway lies it never dies the grass our fathers cut away is growing on their graves today the tiniest brooks that scarcely flow eternally will come and go there is no kind of death to kill the sands that lie so meek and still but man is great and strong and wise and so he dies three mockery god i return to you on april days when along country roads you walk with me and my faith blossoms like the earliest tree that shames the bleak world with its yellow sprays my faith revives when through a rosy haze the clover sprinkled hills smile quietly young winds uplift a bird's clean ecstasy for this o oh god my joyousness and praise but now the crowded streets and choking airs the huddled thousands bruised and tossed about these or the over brilliant thoroughfares the too loud laughter and the empty shout the mirth mad city tragic with its cares for this o oh god my silence and my doubt for humility o oh god if i have ever been so filled with ignorance and sin that i have dared to use thy name in blasphemy in jest in shame if ever i have dared to flout thy works and mock thy deeds with doubt thou must forgive me as thou art divine for god the fault was thine as well as mine o oh, i have used thee time on time to fill a phrase to round a rhyme but was this wrong nay in thy heart thou knowest the noble theme thou art was it my fault that as i sung the daring speech was on my tongue nay if my singing god gave thee offence thou wouldst have robbed me of the lyric sense but dignity hath made thee dumb and so thou biddest me to come and be a sonant part of thee to sing thy praise in blasphemy to be the life within the clod that points the paradox of god to chant beneath a loud and lyric grief a faith that flaunts its very disbelief end of poem this recording is in the public domain Fifth Avenue, Spring Afternoon, by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Fifth Avenue, Spring Afternoon The world's running over with color, with whispers, strange fervors in April. There's a smell in the air as if meadows were under our feet. Spring smiles at the commonest waysides, but she pours out her heart to the city, as one woman might to another who meet after years. 
restless with colour and perfume the streets are a riot of blossoms what garden could boast of such flowers not eden itself primroses pinks and gardenias shame the grey town and its squalor windows are flaming with jonquils fires of gold out of a florist some pansies peer at the crowd like the faces of solemnly mischievous children going to bed and women spring's favorite children frail and fantastically fashioned pass like a race of immortals too radiant for earth the pale and the drab are transfigured they sing themselves into the sunshine every girl is a lyric an urge and a lure and like a challenge of trumpets the spring and its impulse goes through me breezes and flowers and people sing in my blood breezes and flowers and people and under it all o oh beloved out of the song and the sunshine rises your face end of poem this recording is in the public domain tribute by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by annie rue tribute never will you let me tire of leaping passion never can i grow weary of undesired joys the delicate strength of your bosom your hands incredible softness the fluent curve of your body the fierceness of your lips ceaselessly do they call me you and your eloquent beauty are challenge and invitation to ravishing to resist always the burning summons the sweet imperative madness rides over me like a conqueror careless and confident even so goes love trampling and invincible with rapt and pitiless beauty roughshod over the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain part three songs of protest to james oppenheim challenge by lewis untermeyer read for librivox .org by larry wilson the quiet and courageous night the keen vibration of the stars call me from morbid peace to fight the world's forlorn and desperate wars the air throbs like a rolling drum the brave hills and the singing sea unrest in people's faces come like battle trumpets rousing me and while life's lusty banner flies i shall assail with raging mirth the scornful and untroubled skies the cold complacency of earth in the poem this recording is in the public domain Caliban in the Coal Mines by Lewis Untermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Caliban in the Coal Mines. God, we don't like to complain. We know that the mine is no lark. But there's the pools from the rain. But there's the cold in the dark. God, you don't know what it is, you, in your well-lighted sky, watching the meteors whiz, warm with the sun always by. God, if you had but the moon stuck in your cap for a lamp, even you'd tire of it soon, down in the dark and the damp. Nothing but blackness above, and nothing that moves but the cars. God, if you wish for our love, fling us a handful of stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Any City by Lewis Untermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Any city. Into the staring street she goes on her nightly round, with weary and tireless feet, over the wretched ground. A thing that man never spurns, 
a thing that all men despise. Into her soul there burns the street with its pitiless eyes. She needs no charm or wile. She carries no beauty or power, but a tawdry and casual smile for a tawdry and casual hour. The street with its pitiless eyes follows wherever she lurks, but she is hardened and wise. She rattles her bracelets and smirks. She goes with her sordid array, luring without a lure. She is man's hunger and prey, his lust and its hideous cure. All that she knows are the lies, the evil, the squalor, the scars, the street with its pitiless eyes, the night with its pitiless stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Landscapes by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Landscapes. The rain was over, and the brilliant air made every little blade of grass appear vivid and startling. Everything was there with sharpened outlines, eloquently clear as though one saw it in a crystal sphere. The rusty sumac with its struggling spires, the goldenrod with all its million fires, a million torches swinging in the wind. A single poplar, marvelously thinned, half like a naked boy, half like a sword. Clouds like the haughty banners of the Lord. A group of pansies with their shrewish faces, little old ladies cackling over laces. The quaint, unhurried road that curved so well, the prim petunias with their rich, rank smell, the lettuce birds, the creepers in the field. How bountifully were they all revealed! How arrogantly each one seemed to thrive, so frank and strong, so radiantly alive. And over all the morning minded earth, there seemed to spread a sharp and kindling mirth, piercing the stubborn stones until I saw the toad face heaven without shame or awe, the ant confront the stars, and every weed grow proud as though it bore a royal seed, while all the things that die and decompose sent forth their bloom as richly as the rose. Oh, what a liberal power that made them thrive and keep the very dirt that died alive. And now I saw the slender willow tree, no longer calm or drooping listlessly, letting its languid branches sway and fall, as though it danced in some sad ritual, but rather like a young athletic girl, fearless and gay, her hair all out of curl and flying in the wind, her head thrown back, her arms flung up, her garments blowing slack, and all her rushing spirits running over, what made a sober tree seem such a rover, or made the staid and stalwart apple trees, that stood for years knee-deep in velvet peace, turn all their fruit to little worlds of flame, and burn the trembling orchard there below. What lit the heart of every golden glow? Oh, why was nothing weary, dull, or tame? Beauty it was, and keen, compassionate mirth that drives the vast and energetic earth. And, with abrupt and visionary eyes, I saw the huddled tenements arise. Here, where the merry clover danced and shone, sprang agonies of iron and of stone. There, where green silence laughed or stood enthralled, cheap music blared and evil alleys sprawled. The roaring avenues, the shrieking mills, brothels and prisons on those kindly hills. The menace of these things swept over me, a threatening, unconquerable sea. A stirring landscape and a generous earth, freshening courage and benevolent mirth, and then the city like a hideous sore. Good God, and what is all this beauty for? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Funerals by Louis Untermeyer. Read for LibriVox.org. By Nemo. Two Funerals. 
One. Upon a field of shrieking red, a mighty general stormed and fell. They raised him from the common dead, and all the people mourned him well. Swiftly, they cried, let honors come, and glory with her deathless bays. For him let every muffled drum and grieving bugle thrill with praise. Has he not made the whole world fear the very lifting of his sword? Has he not slain his thousands here to glorify the law and Lord? Then make his bed of sacred sod to greater deeds no man can win. And each amused and ancient god began to grin. Two. Facing a cold and sneering sky, cold as the sneering hearts of men, a man began to prophesy, to speak of love and faith again. Boldly he spoke and bravely dared, the savage jest, the kindlier stone. The armies mocked at him, he fared, to battle gaily and alone. Alone he fought, alone to move, a world whose wars would never cease. And all his blows were struck for love, and all his fighting was for peace. They tortured him with thorns and rods, they hanged him on a frowning hill, and all the old and heartless gods are laughing still. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunday by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue on October 15, 2017. Sunday. It was Sunday, eleven in the morning. People were at church. Prayers were in the making. God was near at hand. Down the cramped and narrow streets of quiet Lawrence came the tramp of workers marching in their hundreds, marching in the morning, marching to the graveyard, where, no longer fiery, underneath the grasses, callous and uncaring, lay their friend and sister. In their hands they carried wreaths, and drooping flowers. Overhead their banners dipped and soared like eagles, ay, but eagles bleeding, stained with their own heart's blood, red, but not for glory, red with wounds and travail, red the buoyant symbol of the blood of all the world. So they bore their banners, singing toward the graveyard, so they marched and chanted, mingling tears and tributes, so with flowers, the dying went to deck the dead. Within the church the people heard the sound, and much concern was theirs. God might not hear the sacred word. God might not hear their prayers. Should such things be allowed, these slaves, to vex the Sabbath peace with song, to come with chants like marching waves that proudly swept along? Suppose God turned to these and heard. Suppose he listened unawares, God might forget the sacred word, God might forget their prayers, and so, O oh, tragic irony, the blue-clad guardians of the peace were sent to sweep them back, to see the ribald song should cease, to scatter those who came and vexed God with their troubled cries and cares. Quiet, so God might hear the text, the sleek and unctuous prayers. Up the rapt and singing streets of little Lawrence came the stolid soldiers, and behind the blue coats, grinning and invisible, bearing unseen torches, rode red hordes of anger, sweeping all before them. Lust and evil joined them, terror rode among them, fury fired its pistols, madness stabbed and yelled. Through the wild and bleeding streets of shuddering Lawrence raged the heedless panic hour long and bitter passion tore and trampled men once mild and peaceful fought with savage hatred in the name of law and order and below the outcry like the sea beneath the breakers mingling with the anguish rolled the solemn organ eleven in the morning people were at church prayers were in the making god was near at hand 
it was Sunday. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Strikers by Lewis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Strikers In the mud and scum of things Underneath the whole world's blot Something, they tell us, always sings Why do we hear it not? In the heart of things unclean Somewhere in the furious fight, the face of God is plainly seen. What has destroyed our sight? Yet have we heard enough to feel, yet have we seen enough to know, who bound us to the awful wheel, whose hands have brought us low. And we shall cry out till the wind roars in their ears the thing to come. Yea, though they made us deaf and blind, nothing shall keep us dumb. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Subway by Lewis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis In the Subway Chaos is tamed and ordered as we ride. The rock is rent, the darkness flung aside, and all the horrors of the deep defied. A coil of wires, a throb, a sudden spark, and on a screaming meteor we embark that hurls us past the cold and breathless dark. The centuries disclose their secret graves, riding in splendor through a world of waves. The ancient elements become our slaves. Uncanny fancies whisper to and fro, terror and night surround us here below, and through the house of death we come and go. And here, a wildest glimpse of all, I see the score of men and women facing me, reading their papers calmly, leisurely. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle Cries by Lewis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org. Battle Cries Yes, Jim is gone, you didn't know? He's fighting at the front. It's him as bears his country's hopes, and me as bears the brunt. When war broke out, Jim loud he'd go. He always loved a scrap. You see, the home just weren't the place for such a lively chap. Of course, the work seems rather hard, the kids is rather small. It ain't that I am sore at Jim. I envy him. That's all. He doesn't know what he's about, and cares still less, does Jim. With all his loose and roaring ways, I wished that I was him. It makes him glad and drunken like that music in the smoke. And when they shout, the whole thing seems a picnic and a joke. Oh, yelling puts a heart in you and strength into your blows. I wish that I could hear those cheers washing the neighbor's clothes. It's funny how some things work out. Life is so strange. Lord love us. Here I am working night and day to keep a roof above us. And Jim is somewhere in the south. And Jim ain't really bad. A running round and raising cane and stabbing some kid's dad. But that's what men are for, eh? What else is there for me but working on till Jim comes home? sick of his bloody spree end of poem this recording is in the public domain a voice from the sweatshops by lewis untermeyer read for LibriVox.org by eva davis and nemo a voice from the sweatshops a hymn with responses Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Every morning, mercies new, fall as fresh as morning dew. 
Yet we are choked with sin, with bestial lust and guile. God, so it runs, made this world clean, and man has made it vile. I, here man lives on man, and breaks him day by day, but in the trampled jungle the tiger claws his prey. God's curse is on the thief, the murderer fares ill. Who gave the beasts their taste for blood? Who taught them how to kill? All praise to him who built the hills. All praise to him who each stream fills. All praise to him who lights each star that sparkles in the sky afar. All praise to him who made the earthquake and the flood. All praise to him who made the pest that sucks away the blood. All praise to him whose mind had the desire to make the shark, the scorpion, the gnat, and the envenomed snake. Beauty itself he turns to slay and to be slain. A thousand evil poisons his peaceful woods contain. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. For his mercies, they are sure, his compassion will endure. Rejoice because each man has but a man's desire to sin the little human sins as a child that plays with fire. Rejoice because God's plans are far too deep for talk. He lets the swallow feed on flies, then gives it to the hawk. Rejoice because he made a world in some wild mood, a world that feeds upon itself. And God saw it was good. Yet who are we to rail? Vainly we strive and storm. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. Blind unbelief is sure to err, they say and yet again. God is his own interpreter. When will he make it plain? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Soldiers by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Soldiers Gay flags flying down the street, comes the drum's insistent beat, like a fierce, gigantic pulse, and the screaming fife exults. Soldier, soldier, spick and span, aren't you the lucky man, splendid in your gold and blue, how the small boy envies you. Oh, there's glory for you here, girls to smile and men to cheer. Bands behind and bands before, thrilling with the lust of war. Soldier, soldier, proud as though, marching to a sanguine foe, bravely would you face the brink, fired with music and with drink. Stalwart warriors pass and be, glad you are not such as we, we who, without flags or drums, March to battle in the slums. Regiments of workers, we are a foolish soldiery, Combating till we convert Ignorance, disease, and dirt. Soldier, soldier, look, and then Laugh at us poor fighting men, Struggling on, though every street Is the scene of our defeat. Laugh at us, who, day by day, Come back beaten from the fray, we who find our work undone, we whose wars are never won. Gay flags flying down the street, comes the drum's insistent beat, like a fierce gigantic pulse, and the screaming fife exults. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Peace by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo 
Peace. The fisheries dispute having been amicably compromised, the world is at peace again. News Dispatch At peace? The world has never been at peace. Its wars are never-ending. There is naught in all its battles like these overwrought and storming hours with their dark increase. The cities roar. In every street one sees women and children, battle-wounded, caught. No slaves, no shattered hosts have ever fought so bitterly, so hopeless of release. Well, if it must be war, take up the sword, facing the world with grim and savage glee, and, with the courage of a faith restored, Strike till the darkness falters, and we see that liberty is no mere gaudy word, and peace no slothful, placid mockery. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dying Decadent by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis and Nemo The Dying Decadent And when the evening came he fell asleep And dreamed a dream of pallid loveliness. He wandered in a forest dark and deep, Where phantoms passed him with a soft caress, Where shadows moved and ghostly spirits stood, Sphinxes of silence, wraiths of mystery, a magic wood, a strange and scented wood, where roses sprang from every withered tree, a wood that woke his wonder and his fear, a wood of whispered spells and shameful lore, beyond whose furthest rim he seemed to hear a lonely sea upon a lonelier shore. Vision swept by him with a chanted spell, Crouched at his feet and murmured at his side, And like a dim refrain there rose and fell The restless minor of an ebbing tide. Then, amidst broken sighs and wafts of song, Borne on the breezes, blowing from the west, He saw one figure dancing in the throng, More wan and wonderful, than all the rest. The singing grew, and nearer still she came, a being made of rose and fire and mist, her deep eyes burning like the purple flame hid in the heart of every amethyst. And, with the crooning of the distant sea, she sang to charm his soul and still his fear. Oh, come, my love, that wanders wearily. Oh, come, for you have called, and I am here. Oh, I have waited long to bring you there, Beyond the border of the things that are, Where all is terrible and strange and fair, As were your dreams that reached my favorite star. For you shall live and set the suns to rhyme, You shall escape a mortal's petty fate. You shall behold the birth and death of time. Oh, come, my love, for you these wonders wait. Moonlight and music and the sound of waves, Sea spells encanted by a mermaid muse, And women's voices breathing slumberous staves That you shall have whenever you may choose. And you shall know the maidens of the moon, Lying on lilies shall you see them dance, And you shall fling red roses to the tune, Great roses, while the magic scene enchants. Wantons and queens shall take your heart to play, And lose it in a mesh of tangled hair. And you shall always give your heart away, And find a new one every hour there. Here are the notes of every nightingale, Like rare pearls dropping in a golden pan. And you shall hear white music in each dale, Sweet silver sounds that are not heard by man. And I shall show you all the world's delight, 
the unknown passion of each flaming star your eyes shall be endowed with keener sight beyond the border of the things that are oh come they wait you on the further strand your drab and mournful mood they will exchange for joy's resplendent purple in the land where all is rhythmical and fair and strange oh come and learn the songs unborn unsung and i shall give you all your longing craves that you may live in ecstasy among moonlight and music and the sound of waves entranced he stood so exquisite the art that charmed him he could scarcely whisper low and who are you that comes to stir my heart with fragments of the songs i used to know you speak of wild and yet familiar things exotic passions and uncanny bliss a thousand dreams your voice recalls and brings and who are you that shows me all of this i am the soul and spirit of your songs i am your ballad's grief your lyrics fire i am the light for which your yearning longs your curious rapture and your sick desire i am the burden that your lays beseech the one refrain that flows through all your themes i am the eerie glamour of your speech i am the mystic radiance of your dreams come then with me where all men's dreams are born where wind shall lift your perfumed thoughts aloft where there is never night or noon or morn only a twilight sensuous and soft and you shall know the wonder of each year the fiery secrets of a myriad springs lying on lilies shall you see them here and you shall live and touch immortal things she paused and sighed slowly he shook his head as one who sees a guarded flame go out never to die nay that alone he said were worse than all this wandering in doubt nor would i go if death himself should come to crown life's blessing with a greater gift in such a perfect world i would be dumb what could i long for when my fancies drift and more than this i do not choose to go for i am sick of strange and subtle sounds of fevered phrases tinted words that glow and all the twisting art that but astounds i do not long for tortured harmonies no more my languid soul is racked and tossed with yearnings for strange shores and stranger seas i seek the visions i have long since lost i seek the ways of simple love and hate once more i long to join the virile race for i was blind till now and now too late i see the wonder of the commonplace i long to hear men's voices coarse and wild that never knew a poet's wan desire i long to hear them as a little child listens to elders grouped about the fire to hear them as they mingle grave and gay the prudent planning for the week and then amid the tritous gossip of the day quaint petty talk of merchandise and men i crave the usual and homely themes the every day of which no mermaid sings these are the fairest fragments of my dreams these are the conquering and deathless things he ceased a sudden radiance round him shone and all things melted like a phantom rack and as he swept his hands and stood alone he heard hoarse thunders and the dusk grew black vast tremors shook the world from side to side the earth and sky became a monstrous blot and then it seems he woke and waking died calling on things that he had long forgot. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Funeral Hymn by Louis Untermeyer, read for LibriVox.org. Funeral Hymn When life's gay courage fails at last, and I grow worse than old, though death puts out my fiery heart, I never shall grow cold. For warm is earth's green covering, and warmly shall I lie, wrapped in the winding sheets of air, and the great blue folds of sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Protests by Louis Untermeyer Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson After a painting by Hugo Balen Something impelled her from the hearth. Whispers and winds drew her along. But still unconscious of the earth, she read her book of golden song. Old legends stirred her as she read, of life victoriously unfurled, of glories gone but never dead, and beauty that redeemed the world. O oh, songs, she sighed, your world was fair. My own holds no such lovely things, no glow, no magic anywhere. And then a start, a flash of wings. And with the rush of surging seas over her swept the world's replies, the lyric hills, the buoyant breeze, and all the sudden singing skies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of challenge by Louis Untermeyer.